Shall I turn on her light and put on the dimmer light? It's time, isn't it? Yes. Well, then. You look as if you're expecting something. Now, what would I be expecting, Chief? I don't know. Some kind of sound. Some kind of reaction. To what? Switching out the light. Oh, you're a parent. You've been a child. Probably done wrong as a child. Probably been punished for it. Been locked away. Had the light turned out. Been left alone to suffer it. I think we've all had that as children. Yeah. But we're not dealing with a child. Aren't we? Because she's not going to scream now, you know. Not because of the dark. So there's no point in waiting for it. Even after three days solitary, she hasn't changed. So she's not likely to scream now, is she? Darkness or no darkness. your name. The name is down on paper. You might as well respond to it. The rising bell went 20 minutes ago. It means the same down here as it means anywhere else in the prison. It means you get up out of that pit. And it means you wash yourself and you straighten yourself up. If you want breakfast, that is. Well, do you want breakfast or not? Look at me, will you? I said, do you or don't you want breakfast? Oh, I'd like to know. Just whether you're conning me or not. Whether you're conning a lot of us. Yourself, even. So, up out of that bed in 20 seconds. Name and number. Give your name and number. You were asked to give your name and number. Other prisoners have to give theirs. You're no different from them. You're not deaf and you're not dumb and you're not different from anyone else. More awkward, maybe. More stupid, even. I mean, do I really have to say the same things to you I said three mornings ago? You were reported for refusing labour, and because you chose not to give an explanation, I assumed you had nothing to say in your own defence and were therefore guilty. Subsequently, you were given three days cellular confinement. Was there any trouble during those three days? No, madam. She still hasn't spoken. I said, was there any trouble? No, madam. Three days on and three days off. That's the rule of cellular confinement. A rule given to us. Now, you have every right to refuse to answer. You also have every right to make a fool of yourself. But you have no right to refuse to work. If it happens again, you'll be punished again. Do you understand that? Perhaps you'd like to answer for once, so that someone can have a civilized conversation with you. For their sakes, if not for yours. I should think about that if I were you very seriously. Right, back to normal. Come along. Oh, one more thing, Pierce. Another reminder. The Board of Visitors has much wider powers of punishment than I have. It can award a sentence of solitary confinement of up to 56 days, if it thinks fit. Well, you want my opinion on that? That's why I asked if you could be here. <laughs> I shouldn't think it needs an opinion. A girl has started something she can't finish, that's all. Do you need me any more? No. Good. What do you mean she started something she can't finish? Well, it's obvious. Pride. A touch of the sulks. She'll get over it. I'd like to get one thing clear in my mind. Yes? She's been punished for refusing to work, right? Yes. Not for refusing to talk. Well, you heard what I said to her about her refusal to communicate. So why the threats? Threats? You threatened her with the visiting board. Yes. Well, what's the point? 
She served her three days solitary. She's caused no trouble. Mrs. Armitage you... about it. I really, what are we talking about? The fact is, none of us has the time to worry about a girl who might just be trying to draw attention to herself. But she must abide by the rules. Well, I don't think she did refuse to work. I think she was prepared to work. But she wasn't prepared to speak. Well, I know that. Therefore, there was a breakdown of communication between her and Officer Royal. Yes. And Officer Royal put her on a report. Because she also doesn't have the time to wait about for some idiot girl to make a verbal decision. I have a lot of other things to do and a lot of other things to worry about. Fair enough, but... And when Marion Pierce has grown tired of her game, or when she's swallowed a little pride, she may begin to say something. And I think that your curiosity and your need to have Dr. May share that curiosity to put on a parade for that girl here in this room probably does more harm than good. Oh, for God's sake, Charles, it's a demonstration. An unsubtle and senseless demonstration. Dr. May has just said it all. It works with him as much as it works with me. And Charles, if she refuses to work again by way of answer, she'd go back into solitary again. The hard way, if necessary. Make it tougher, then. Don't you think perhaps she's making it tough for herself? Yeah. Because any prisoner, or any officer with a grudge against that girl, could, to suit themselves, make her not say just about anything. Yes. My last patient. Come in. Sorry we were interrupted. So, what do you expect me to do? Stick pins into the girl? No. Well, it's the only appropriate cure for reticence. Or perhaps you'd rather do it yourself. I can supply the pins if you like. One jab ought to be enough. Or a belt round the face, even. She'll probably sound off with a few sudden expletives. Call you for all the bastards under the sun. But you won't mind. Because you'll have satisfied yourself that the girl can put one or two words together. And we won't mind. We won't mind because you'll be back doing whatever it is you're supposed to be doing. Leaving us to decide who's behaving normally or abnormally. Oh, God, you can't trust anybody in this place. It's impossible to delegate. There ought to be some slides here somewhere. What kind of dialect? What? When she calls me all the bastards under the sun, what kind of dialect will she use? I don't know. Or tone of voice. Pitch. 
Does she have difficulty in pronouncing certain words, certain letters? Does she stammer, stutter? Well, I said I don't know. Or does she have good diction? <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? Marion Pierce. I want to know what her voice is like. Who cares? I care. And I think we should all care. Oh, come on, now, child. I think we should all want to know. Look, aren't you curious? No. I mean, the fact that the girl's 27. She's been with us for nearly a month. We don't know what she sounds like. What she has to say, what she might be scared of. Are you trying to make some kind of diagnosis? No, no. I'm See, I had a girl in here um, last December. Gillian Shaw, remember? Yes. 28 years old. Now, she didn't speak either. Cancer of the throat. She died outside in the Royal Free. Only she'd got a reason for not talking. Well, maybe this girl has a reason, too. Well, look up the girl's records, medical reports, the lot. She is as fit as two fiddles. I'm not talking about that kind of sickness, and you know it. That's the reason I wanted you there in the centre office this morning. Oh, so this, uh, this attempted diagnosis of yours, it's a psychiatric one, is it? Well, of course it is. You introduced me to it, didn't you? Did I? Yes. Allowed me to sit in on group work, make a study of... Prisoners and patients had switched off. Yeah. Well, it's all well and good, and I appreciate the interest, but Marion Pierce isn't switched off. Oh, for God's sake, go and take a good, hard look at her, child. I have. Oh, the eyes, maybe. And the expression, even. But she's with us. She's aware. Dumb insolence, they used to call it in the forces. Well, you know you must have had some. You've probably forgotten. I haven't forgotten. I just don't relate this to it. This isn't exactly insolence. No? Well, it depends how good you are at it. If you smile, you give the game away. Even a trace. Did you ever play the expressionless stare game? That's good practice. For what? Whatever you want out of life. Come here. Uh, all you need is a mirror and your own patience and a lot of time. Now, that girl probably had a lot of time living alone, just a bedsitter, a mirror and her own company. You simply concentrate. You stare at your reflection and pretend that you're waiting for it to react first. You shut off all the noises around you, all the ones you don't want to hear, that is. You can even reach a stage where you can control the eyelids. Perhaps the tear ducts, so that you don't have to blink too often. It's a bit like yoga. A bit like meditation. <laughs> but it is a... It is a do-it-yourself game. It's a means of defence. It's a way of saying, screw the lot of you and getting away with it. I don't agree. No, well, I didn't expect you to. Not in this case. So, what is this girl saying? I don't know yet. I want you to find out for me. Me? Yes. You and Mrs. Forrester seem to want me back doing what I should be doing. So I'll leave things to you. What things? Marion Pierce and whatever is troubling her. <laughs> that is, unless you want me to waste a great deal more time by making out a report. You won't back up. Well, one thing's quite clear. In her own quiet way, she is going to irritate almost everyone eventually, whether they want to help her or not. Well, that doesn't include you. No, and it won't. I think she's a great deal more astute than we realise. All right, I'll do it. Do what? I'll stick the pins in Marion Pierce for you, find out if she can be hurt. That's what you want, isn't it? Not quite. So, I'll satisfy your curiosity for you. Oh, thanks. Don't mention it. It's all part of the job.
don't want to talk about it. Don't want to? Don't need to, then, as far as I'm concerned. As long as the girl stays quiet, that's one problem left. Oh. So all your problems have to be audible ones, do they? I didn't say that, so don't try it on. Try what on? Putting words into my mouth. Me? Yes, you. I think you, you've missed your true vocation. You should have been a ventriloquist. <laughs> Now, I mean, have you ever been alone in a room or a cell with Marion Pierce? Well, no. The silence can be deafening. You find that you can almost hear your own thoughts wandering, going off a tangent. You mean a loss of interest? No. To do that, there has to be something, or some form of communication to make you lose interest in the first place, doesn't it? Well, yes. I mean it, she does. Just once, but she never has. Well, perhaps she doesn't need it. So why the concern? Oh, I'm not concerned. Charles is. Oh. Well, it's his old problem. An inability to leave well alone. <laughs> so he's passing the buck. Yes, but only because of his inability. You mean you're doing a witch hunt for him? If you like. Come on! <laughs> Come on now. Oh All right. One egg. Yeah. 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 Right, let's get on with that tea. Yes, all right. It wasn't it. Oh, yeah. 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 Making up for the last three days. Can't say I blame you. Nobody likes being alone. Working alone. I mean, really being alone. Now do they? Marion? Treating silence with silence? No, no, the opposite. I believe in noise. It wouldn't be without it. Now, where I live, my flat, it's on a busy street, and I leave the windows open so that I can hear the traffic. I like it. And sometimes I leave the radio on in one room and the television on in the other. And in the kitchen, my fridge makes a hell of a racket. Chugga, 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 chugga. Vibration needs packing or something, but I wouldn't let anyone near it to change it. So how would you survive if there was a power failure? Oh, I'd think of something. Yes? Born at Harwichham in Kent, August 1949. Brought up in an orphanage called St Peter's in Ashford. In 1955, she was fostered by a couple named Pierce and went to live with them in Bonnington, not far from Ashford. They named her Marion. Four years after that, her foster father died. Marion left the foster home when she was 16. Why? Well, no real reason. Just the time to move on. No real emotional ties, maybe. A few friends, by all accounts. No ambitions. At school, she was just a name on the register, no more. Well, no one really remembered her, only the name. Marion Pierce? Yes, I think we did have a Marion Pierce. A quiet girl, they all say. Now, you got this from where? Probation records. Not as quiet as she is now, mind you. No. But she was never known to be a great talker. <laughs> In fact, one of her statements to the Chatham Police must have been one of the shortest on record. I did it. Nothing more. <laughs> now, she's had numerous jobs. She's a natural resigner. When she was 21, she set fire to the shop where she worked because she was tired of the job. Well, she got two years probation for that. Yes, I know. And over the next few years, she seemed settled. And then this year, she caused another fire, and for the same reason. Only this time it was an office. Yes. 
you probably studied the medical reports that were prepared for medicine and science. Yes, well, there's nothing very sick or sinister there. She lit the fires because she didn't like the job. Now, I've no doubt that her defence would like to have proved that her fire-raising was a substitute for sex or salvation or worse, but no. I imagine she had about as much use for her defence as she's had for anyone else in her life. Yes, well, uh... Well, what about that? Well, you know, boyfriends, engagements... Sex? All right, then. Sex. Is there anything there on record? Nothing. And where's the foster mother now? Dead. Five years ago. And the girl has got no blood relations? Yes. <laughs> well, it's not much of a witch hunt, is it? Yeah. I thought you said you didn't want to talk about it. You wanted information. Oh, yes. And is it true what you said earlier? What's that? That because she keeps her mouth shut, she's one less problem to deal with. No, not really. I suppose I was being clever when I said that. Oh, well, that's a breakthrough for a start. What? Hearing you admit to that. Oh, look, in a strange, roundabout way, I happen to care. If I didn't, I wouldn't have compiled this little lot, now would I? Well, no. But as I've also said, and I don't go back on that statement, if the girl is too proud or too silly or too independent to want help, my kind of help, then I'm not going out of my way to sell it to her. No. That one thing does worry me a little when I've time to think about it. Because I remember people, prisoners. I have a good memory for individuals. I know. So what worries me is in a few years' time... Or should I say what might be worrying me then? This girl. Faceless, voiceless. Not even a real name to call her own. All we know about her is from second-hand information. She might as well not exist. So I worry sometimes, I think... Am I going to be like those school teachers and others in a few years' time? Am I going to say, when asked, Marion Pierce? Oh, yes, I think we did have a Marion Pierce here. Oh. Looking for a peaceful hideaway. Like to relax and enjoy my afternoon tea. Oh, and I brought one for you as well. I've just had one. We didn't have another. Ah. Hmm. Ah, beautiful. Why do you want a peaceful hideaway? Just told you. Well, so long as this is peaceful enough, I mean, you could always try cellular confinement. That might be too much. No, this'll do. What do you really want? Me? Oh, nothing much else, really. Sometimes I get a few thoughts in my head that worry me. No, worry is the wrong word. that intrigue me slightly. Thoughts? Yes. It becomes like a kind of puzzle. Well, part of a puzzle. And it makes my mind wander. That can be distracting, can be a nuisance, when you have other day-to-day -day things to be thinking about. What worries you? No, I said, um, intrigues me slightly. All right, then what intrigues you slightly? Well, for a start, for a finish even, how on earth can a person be put on a report for refusing to work when it's already been established that that person is one of the steadiest workers in this place? Also, as this particular person doesn't choose to speak, how did she refuse? By not doing the work. Oh. Only, you see, I wasn't on duty on that particular day. Or on the day the award was given. No. I've read the reports, of course. But that isn't really first-hand, is it? Your bad luck, then. What? For not being here. Oh, yeah, I realise that. I've also had the uh, Silent Disobedience Act read out to me. Ah, 
Ah, very nice. Yes, it is peaceful in here. Quiet. Now it is. But supposing there was a lot of noise? Noise? Yes. Machines hammering away, music playing through some lousy speaker, women chattering and laughing. And supposing you were dumb? Marion Pierce isn't dumb. No, but she doesn't choose to speak. Therefore, she can't answer in her own defence. Anyway, the dictionary defines dumb as being without the power of speech. Without. It doesn't say deprived of the power of speech. So let's suppose that this room is full of the kind of noise that I've just described, and you're head down there with your notebook and your pencil, because you like work. And I was to say in a moderate tone of voice, drink your tea before it gets cold. Officer Royal had told Marion Pierce to do a specific job. She repeated the order twice. Yes, but she didn't say in which tone of voice. It isn't written down. Then ask her. <laughs> Too late now. As I said before, it's your bad luck. You shouldn't have been off duty that day. No. Because if I had been on duty, I would have asked Officer Royal that question. What do you think of her? Who? Royal. She's a good officer. Yes. Anyway, thanks. For what? Well, for allowing me to drink my tea in peace. Mrs. Armitage, I'd, uh... But can it wait? I'd like a word. Well, only I'm just on my way to the machine shop. Well, you're all finished up there by now, surely. Oh, it's Marion Pierce. I have to fetch her and take her to the hospital wing. Dr. Mays wants a word with her. Oh? So if you wanted to talk to me about her, I suggest you wait in the hospital wing. No, not just now. I think I'll keep my distance for the time being. <laughs> Funny how we're all becoming slightly guarded, isn't it? Guarded? Yeah, closing ranks, all of us. Probably without actually realising it. And all because of one prisoner. Yeah. Anyway... It wasn't Marion Pierce that I wanted to talk about. Oh? No, it was Officer Royal. Oh. Well, I suggest that you go to the personnel department. No, no. Nothing that detailed. Now, I know she's been with us for uh, nearly a year. Just over a year. Just over, then. Do you trust her? Yes. No, not just as an officer. As a person. Yes, I think I do. Yes, of course I do. Hmm. I mean, provided she does the job properly, why should I judge her? Yes, you're right. Just me. Overactive mind sometimes. Yeah. As you say, it's all there in the personnel files. Instinct has nothing to do with it. Instinct? Yeah. Anyway, let's forget it. Just because she reminds me of some kid of a babysitter that we had at home some time ago. Oh, what on earth are you talking about? Yeah. It was Beth who found her. Young girl. Good home. Good parents. Honest as they come. Punctual, reliable. A gem. You know, I could never go out of an evening and relax properly knowing that that particular gem of a girl was looking after my child. Ever had that feeling about a person? See, it meant that I always had to drag Beth home early from our evenings out. We got rid of the girl eventually. I had to. Not her fault, just me, my instinct. It's like a kind of warning that everything was, well, kind of off-centre, not quite right. Anyway, as I said before, it's just me. Forget it. I've just had a word with Mrs. Watts, and we think it's time that you did the sweeping today. Time you took a turn. Take the hand brush and clear the bed. 
No sense in wasting power, is there? No, Chief. Fierce, you're wanted. See that's done, and as soon as possible, right? Ah, hello, Marion. I'm sorry about your tea, but you haven't missed it. I've arranged for the red band to bring some in. Shall we? Come on, this way. You'd have been off duty by now, Diane. Soon. I have one or two things to do, so I may hang on for a while. Come to think of it, you never seem to be in a hurry to leave. You must like this place. Oh, I like the job. Then that probably explains it. I've never asked, or oh, probably I've forgotten, head like a sieve when it comes to staff welfare, but do you live at home? Home? With your parents? No. in a house that belongs to some friends and married couple known them for years they're a bit wild why never seem to sleep and she enjoys talking at the top of her voice and he likes to get drunk happy drunk and they've lots of friends lots of late nights lots of parties and you join in me no no i'm not a great one for mixing must make life difficult for you at times what <laughs> oh that noise oh Oh, I don't mind the noise. <laughs> I like it. Or well, it's better than living in silence, isn't it? Well, I've seen so much of that. Too many people living like that and creeping around the house. Well, I mean, if I needed that, I wouldn't be living there, would I? I wouldn't be living in London for a start. I wouldn't be doing this job. No. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> well, it's funny, I suppose. Funny? Yeah. I've heard of people being scared of the dark. I'm, I'm not never scared of science. I'm not suggesting. It's just that I prefer not to live in a vacuum, that's all. All right. Anyway, um. <laughs> anyway, I've got things to do. Now, what would you call yourself? A Kentish girl or a girl of Kent? Now, there is some sort of difference, isn't there? It's, um. Well, it's something to do with the River Medway, something about which side you were born on. <laughs> well, I'll look it up and I'll let you know. I like Kent, well, some of it, the nicer parts. I like Whitstable. Now, that's, uh, that's famous for something. Now, what is it? It's, um, it's Whitstable something or other. Um, Whitstable oysters, that's it. Not that I was ever rich enough to be able to afford them. And then there's Faversham, that's near there. That's a pleasant old market town, Faversham. Oh, perhaps you know the other side of the county better, like Romney Marsh or Dimchurch, say. I've been to Romney Marsh, I like that. It gets a bit noisy, though, in the summer with the car ferry planes coming into Lyd Airport every five minutes. Did that ever worry you? Why won't you speak to us, Marion? Because you can speak. We know you can. 
<laughs> We'd like to hear your voice. It might surprise us. We could do with a few surprises in here, right, Mrs. Armitage? Certainly could. All right. If you won't speak, why don't you write something? Here. Now, if there's anything that's worrying you, anything that you feel at all concerned about, anything that you feel you'd like to tell me in confidence, Mrs. Armitage doesn't have to see it. You just write it down there. Huh? No good? Oh, and I was looking forward to some kind of communication with you, so it's a shame. I mean, you look pleasant enough, intelligent enough. We might have had an interesting conversation, <laughs> even on paper. Or perhaps none of it's any bloody good with you. Perhaps you're what some of them say you are. Thick, stupid, showing off, starting something you can't finish. Well, I'll tell you one thing that I do know about you, Pierce. You're boring. This game of yours, it bores me. It bores me silly. But I'm told what to do. And I'm told that I've got to try and talk to you. In fact, I don't even like having to look at you, let alone deal with you. You are sexually unattractive. Well, to me, and since my appreciation of the opposite sex is pretty average, I would say that you're sexually unattractive to most men. Maybe if you went out of your way to do something with yourself, it might help, but... I doubt it. You just haven't got it. I'm sorry, but I believe in telling the truth. You're unattractive. Ugly, even. We should have left you and that hit prison of yours down in Maidstone. We don't want you, we don't need you. We shouldn't have wasted our money on the petrol for the car to bring you here. Marion Pierce, whenever she was brought here from Maidstone Prison, who escorted her? Well, surely Mrs. Armitage would remember. She could tell you. Well, yes, she could, but I didn't ask her at the time. Uh, but I've been thinking since. Thinking what? Thinking that your damn curiosity could be right for once. Eh? Do you ever play the fruit machines? Well, you should, because some people do better with intuitive luck than they do with judgment. I bet you would hit three in a line every time. That Maidstone Prison transfer. I seem to remember they had problems with staff. Couldn't manage transit. So we sent somebody from here? Yes. Was it Officer Royal? I have a feeling it might have been. Why? I just want to know. Well, we'll soon find out. Governor here, you're just off. Could you do one last thing for me? Check through the transit files and find out who escorted Marion Pierce here from Maidstone. About, um... Four weeks. About four weeks ago. Yes. 
fine. So, what have you done? Allowed yourself a second opinion? Possibly. Bad sign. Instinctive and accurate opinions are hard to come by in your business. Must mean you're slipping if you need to allow yourself to. Yeah, but I didn't know Hello? at the time that... Sorry. Nothing. So, what is your latest opinion? My latest opinion is that it's a possibility that Marion Pierce is suffering from some kind of traumatic condition. A condition that prevents her from speaking? A condition that prevents her from wanting to speak. Was this what you saw in the first place, Mr. Radley? Yeah. I couldn't explain it. I was looking hard enough. Mm. I suppose I wasn't. Still, next time. Yes? It was. On the 29th. Right. You can go home now. Thanks. The escort from Maidstone was Diane Royal. You were sent for then. Taken to the hospital wing. So, what did they want? Saw Dr. Mays, did you? So, what did he want? I should be off duty, do you know that? I should be away from this hole. Don't like it at this time of day. Don't like it when it starts to quieten down. So, what did he want? Dr. Mays, what did he want? Asked you things, did he? Look, this is one time when you should be answering, you cow. It's one time when you should be saying something. Do you know that? All right. So you can cocoon yourself. You're in a position to. You've nothing to lose. I wish to God I could do it. I go around looking, trying to find ways of covering up the fears that I feel and escaping from them, and you found it, you cow. You just go quiet. Bloody easy for you. When I was a kid, my parents never spoke. And when, when there was some kind of difference between them, they just stopped speaking. No noise, no shouting, no swearing, just this... Just this silence that just happened like that. No warning, nothing, it just happened, just like that. I went on for months sometimes. Nobody knew, only them and me. I mean, nobody else cared, nobody else came to see them or even bothered. And sometimes I'd, I'd, I'd come home from school hoping that things might have changed while I was out and then I'd, I'd open the door and, and I, I could feel this silence and feel it before I'd even entered the place. I knew that it was there for a long time to come, forever sometimes. I knew that I couldn't help, I couldn't change things, I couldn't put things right. Now, even now, at this age, there's a lot of things that I can't put right. Not, not capable of putting right. <laughs> so, Dr. May sends for you. Sees it all in you. All your troubles. Look, I know that when I came to Maidstone to fetch you, and when I first... Look, I know that you felt my fear, sensed it, in the same way that you're sensing it now, in the same way that I somehow sense yours. But if only you'd spoken to me just once during that journey, I mean, anything, that terrifying bloody silence, I mean, anything that reminds me of... Look! I'm sorry I humiliated you in the way that I did. 
I couldn't help it. I couldn't help doing it. I mean, you didn't have to have your hands tied with my raincoat belt, but I made you. I mean, it was against the rules, but I didn't care. When I got so pig sick of that silence, I took the coat away to punish you, like I'm always trying to punish you. I took the coat away so that the people at that petrol station could see you, could see your hands, could see you for what you were. And I made you get out of the car for exercise, and I saw that attendant looking at you, those kids laughing at you, all the time while I made you walk up and down. Look, don't you understand? My fear. Look. I'm bloody sorry. Can you hear that? Oh, for God's sake, you stupid dog bloody cow. I'm so scared of myself. If only you'd show me something. You should be off duty. Yes. You better go home now. Home. Report to me in the morning. First thing in my office. Pierce, you're being transferred to the hospital wing tomorrow just for a while. In the meantime, do you wish to make any charges against Officer Royal? Well, do you? <laughs> 